Hello and welcome to another Spectrum Geeks video. Thank you very much for tuning in. It's that time of the month again when I talk about the performance of my solar PV system here in Worcestershire, UK. Let me roll the intro, take you through the setup as a quick reminder, and then talk about the solar performance and the other kind of elements to my solar setup for the month of November 2021. <laughs> Many thanks if you're a subscriber or a, a regular viewer to Spectrum Geeks. So this little bit at the beginning you'll have heard before, but if you're new to Spectrum Geeks, thanks very much for checking out the channel. Please consider liking this video and subscribing and pressing the bell notification icon. There's all sorts of content on the channel, solar PV just being one part of it. Also uh, cars, electric and ice, uh, motorbikes, gadgetry, geekery kind of things and uh, plenty more. So. Just to start off again with my solar PV system here in the UK, uh, I'm based in the Worcestershire area. It's November 2021 that we're talking about statistics here and my setup is as follows. So I have a nine kilowatt solar array that's made up of 30 PIMAR solar panels. On the back of each one of those is a solar edge uh, optimizer and they all connect back to a six kilowatt solar edge HD wave inverter. In addition to the solar, I also have a Tesla Powerwall 2, but with the original gateway, so no backup or off-grid capabilities. And then in addition to that, I have uh, electric uh, vehicles and a hot water tank, and I use surplus solar to heat the hot water uh, via using the My Energy Eddy, and I charge our electric cars with the um, My Energy Zappy, the Generation 1 version, and they're all connected through a Harvey, which is basically a wireless CT clamp to communicate with those My Energy devices. When obviously I haven't got solar, that or not massive surpluses of solar like we have right now in November because it's winter time, obviously I have to pull from the grid. And I am with uh, Octopus Energy. If you're looking to change uh, energy provider, which obviously is a bit kind of turbulent at the moment. I do recommend considering Octopus Energy. I'm on their Octopus Go tariff, which means uh, during the hours of half past midnight to half past four in the morning, I only pay five pence per kilowatt hour. My tariff during peak time is about to go up in January because I come to the end of the fixed rate, but my understanding is it'll still keep at that five pence. And I have had to move my gas off the fixed rate now onto the flexible Octopus. So I've gone from paying about 2.17 pence um, per kilowatt hours in gas to now four pence. So that obviously is increasing my gas cost. So that explains the setup I have here on my house. Now let's go through how the system has performed just at a high level, any kind of key dates, and then talk about how specifically uh, the car charging and the heating and the hot water and the power and stuff has done, how that's kind of saved me some money or at least helped pay back into the cost of my solar PV system. And what might have been the system if I didn't uh, managed to get in on the old feed-in tariff, um, how things would have worked out. So if we look at the um, performance for November 2021, you can see there on the screen on the left-hand side, um, not brilliant um, production, but we'll talk about in a moment how that compares to previous years. So only 272 kilowatt hours of um, solar PV production. It's not really been a great month, or at least it hasn't felt like a great month. Um, and the consumption is um, pretty high, so 1.43 megawatt hours of electricity in total consumption. If you're new to the channel, um, both myself and my wife work from home full time. Uh, and in my day, I've got multiple monitors, multiple computers, multiple servers that are running 24 by 7. And we're also charging and running two electric vehicles as well. And actually, in the recent months, I've been doing quite a lot of kind of travel, both for work and ferrying kids around and things. So that all kind of equates. Um, to the higher, perhaps than average electricity usage, but again, most of that is happening off peak. So in terms of that solar generation that we had, we're able to utilize 99% uh, of it, so 269 uh, kilowatt hours were utilized and just um, 2.71 kilowatt hours was exported. If you look at the next um, little slot there in terms of the production, you can see that Things started off pretty well at the beginning of November and then kind of dipped down towards the middle and it's kind of been a little bit varied uh, towards the end of the month. Obviously, as the days get shorter, 
Um, it's been quite overcast and cloudy uh, and the sun actually has to get to a decent height before it starts to generate here um, in the UK. In terms of the consumption, you can see um, my consumption actually has been relatively good in terms of uh, a pattern wise. Again, more lights on, computers are running, uh, washing machines, dishwashers, that kind of thing, where normally we would run those during the day and um, obviously use solar. In, here in the cave, I also have an electric panel heater. I talk about that every year. I always consider about maybe changing it. But obviously now in the winter months, I've got that on during the day, which takes a lot of energy out of the power wall and then we end up I meaning we have to pull from the grid as the later hours of the day. In terms of comparisons between um, the solar generation and that um, last year, it's difficult to say for last year because if you have been a regular viewer and subscriber, I had no solar panels and even no roof on uh, kind of this time last year. Um, so you can see our November comparison isn't that great uh, for 2020. But if we compare it to 2019, things actually weren't that bad um, this year. And actually when I looked at my energy consumption, so pulling from the grid, even though I felt it's quite high this month, it actually wasn't too bad considering to 2019. We used less electricity from the grid in 2021 than we did in 2019. One thing I have noticed in November is for some reason the power wall doesn't seem to have been performing as well in terms of how much power it's deciding to pull from the grid um, during those off-peak times for us to use during the day. It's kind of sorted itself out towards the end of November but at the beginning of the month constantly I would see it wasn't charging to 100% overnight because I guess it thought that there's going to be um, solar that could charge up during the day and then that didn't happen. So we have pulled a little bit more peak electricity uh, than I would like, but we'll touch on that uh, in a moment. So in terms of any standout days, nothing really great uh, in November. Both our highest generation day and our highest export day was both the same day, which was the 1st of November. So you can see uh, on the slide here, 26.9 kilowatt hours of solar generated on the 1st and we exported 823 watt hours. So not a lot of export. Um, but the other thing to mention is my goal is really to try not to export anything. So any surplus goes into obviously the power wall, heating hot water, or charging our electric vehicles. We try very hard not to put anything back into the grid. And we'll touch on that a little bit later in terms of the feeding tariff that um, we're currently on as we got in quite late, uh, but still before they kind of scrap the whole uh, feeding tariff thing here in the UK. So moving on from solar performance, we'll quickly look at uh, the performance of our Powerwall 2. I mentioned this every month for the, the last few months. They changed the app. I think it's crap. Um, it's very difficult to get meaningful data out of it, but um, we managed to get 334.1 kilowatt hours of energy out of the Powerwall over the month of November 2020. 2021 uh, which obviously means we didn't have to pull that uh, from peak rate uh, from the grid a large majority of that 344.1 kilowatt hours will have come from off-peak electricity and a little bit would have been dribbled in um, from solar surplus in terms of the, the hot water so again only a very small amount um, of our hot water heating came from solar so only 7.51 kilowatt hours and then the remainder 144.59 kilowatt hours came from off-peak um, charging to heat our hot water so basically uh, every night i think it's from about half past two in the morning to half past four in the morning that's when we um, heat our hot water so we put about six kilowatt hours uh, per morning into hot water so that we're going to have um, showers and baths uh, obviously for parents and kids uh, and actually our hot water tank is pretty firmly efficient and that two hours does us uh, fine for a family of four so we're pretty fortunate there that we can kind of minimize some of those costs and obviously do that off peak in terms of charging our electric cars um, so as mentioned we have two electric cars my wife has a 40 kilowatt hour nissan leaf and i have uh, the polestar 2 with a 78 kilowatt hour battery we are having to do a bit of commuting for work, taking kids to school and kind of taking them on their journeys. And again, you can see the solar surplus for car charging has been absolutely abysmal. So only 0.19 kilowatt hours of solar charging for the electric vehicles um, and a kind of a massive 407.90 kilowatt hours from the grid. But 
All of that electricity came from off peak. We don't do any charging during peak times. We're pretty good at managing charging both cars um, or turn it as we need in terms of uh, charging them off peak. So that 407 kilowatt hours, even though it sounds like a lot, it's probably um, around about 20 pounds to have two cars um, running for the whole month. And you know, I haven't got to off the top of my head how many hundreds of miles that is, but there's a fair few hundred miles um, a month, uh, maybe maybe in the thousand, I don't, I'm not sure, uh, that we've done um, between us. So that still works out uh, pretty good for us. Finally, if we look at kind of the previous bill that I had uh, from Octopus Energy to talk about kind of how our bills work out in terms of kind of how things are on the Octopus Go tariff for us. So we pulled 248.7 kilowatt hours of electricity from uh, the peak from the grid. And this is when the power walls run out and we're obviously having to cook and light and run the servers and stuff. We have no option um, but to pull from the grid during peak times. But 956.9 kilowatt hours of our electricity all is off peak. And as I mentioned, that's going to be charging cars, uh, topping up the power wall and heating our hot water. Um, so the large majority of our electricity comes from off peak. And what that means right now um, with the current tariff that we're on, which again will be ending in January, is it equates to a, an average of 6.47 pence per kilowatt hour, which I think is, is pretty good, especially, well, pretty good for anyone, especially for a household like us that has quite a high energy uses. So uh, our electricity bill uh, for that was 189, uh, 189, 89 pounds and 46 pence. Obviously that includes standing charges and etc. like that. Obviously now that winter is here uh, and obviously working from home, my wife's in the house where the heating is from gas and obviously we need to kind of heat things up so people don't freeze to death. Uh, and even our, our house is quite thermally efficient. We still needed to kind of pump 978.1 kilowatt hours of gas into our house and including the standing charges and what have you, that cost us 31.75 pence uh, in total. So that's kind of our energy costs for the previous month. Finally, if we talk about the solar payback uh, calculation, so I do a video every year on terms of how the payback is helping the house. So this kind of gives you a little a month on month kind of breakdown of how things are going. So for the month of November, in, in terms of the solar that we generated and we get a small payment in terms of feed-in tariff, we get paid £11.36 for the solar generation that we did. I guess that's to kind of provide some relief on the grid. And then there is the 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 um, feed-in tariff export benefit. So this is the deemed export. So regardless of the fact that I only exported a very small amount, I think it was like 2.7 kilowatt hours or whatever, um, they basically assume that you may have exported up to 50%, which obviously isn't the fact in my case, but I get paid for it anyway. So I then get paid £7.59 for that. Then for the solar generation that we did have, that 272 kilowatt hours, wherever it was, means I don't have to buy that from the grid during peak times, because obviously peak times is when the solar is happening, not at night. That means there's 37 pounds and one penny that I don't have to buy uh, the current um, peak grid prices, which is around, I think, 16 pence at the moment for, for what I'm on. Uh, and that makes a total payback into my kind of cost of installing solar and my battery of 55 pounds 96. That kind of goes into the kitty as part of the solar payback. And I think from memory, I'm looking at about a nine year payback um, right now, and we're currently in year four. Obviously, if I'd not had the feed in tariff and I was exporting that measly 2.71 kilowatt hours, uh, because again, I'm trying to maximize my solar generation and not sell it back anyway, I'd have only paid been paid 15 pence for the amount of electricity that I'd exported um, in the month of November 2021. So that's it, that concludes the solar performance stats for my house here in Worcestershire, UK for November 2021. Hope this kind of helps. If you're thinking about getting solar uh, and you're kind of on the fence, does it make sense? In my opinion, it does make sense. Even if you don't have the feed-in tariff uh, over the longer term, you've got a little bit more control over energy costs. Even in the winter like this, you're still saving some money. And in the summer, obviously, when it comes most into its own, there's many different battery options as well now. So the power wall uh, may not be the best option these days. I think um, Give Energy have a good kind of battery offering, which I think is pretty affordable um, and maybe something worth considering. But 
Yeah, uh, feel free to ask any questions down below in the comments. Also, as always, if you have a solar PV system here in the UK, feel free to share with others how your solar system has performed so people can kind of share and compare. And again, if you're looking to make the jump into solar, perhaps there's someone in the region near you and they can kind of give you some indication uh, in the comments how their system performed. So if you had something similar, it may or may not be comparable to that. As always, thank you very much for watching. Uh, obviously the next video will be after Christmas, so have a great Christmas. There will be a, a little Christmas greetings video coming to the channel on Christmas Day. But thank you very much for watching, subscribing, and just being part of the Spectrum Geeks community. Take care of yourself and your loved ones again. The um, Omicron variant of COVID is rearing its head. So look after yourselves, stay safe. And uh, yeah, we'll see you in January for our December 2021 solar PV update. That's it. Take care. Goodbye for now.